Hello, what's up guys? I'm Kyle from KGR, and a lot of people have been asking me, what do you think of the Switch? And other stuff like that, like, what are your thoughts on the games? And, like, I've gotten questions through Ask Me Mondays, I have gotten questions through my live streams. And for those who are new to the channel, you probably don't give two shits about either of those. My point is, a lot of people were asking me, and I'm like, just wait, I'm gonna do a video on it, and, uh, and now I'm doing it. A week later but still I, I did it so anyway last week there was a presentation about the Nintendo switch uh, unveiling the price and launch lineup and other stuff like that and I'm excited I'm very excited but just because I'm excited that doesn't mean I'm blinded by I'll, I can't say nostalgia glasses I'm not blinded by Nintendo glasses I should say like I'm being critical that is what I want to say like I I do see the positives and the negatives, so we're gonna address that in this video. There was one video that I saw that was like completely bashing on it, and the guy was claiming that he was a huge Nintendo fan. I I, I don't know. Fine. Um, we have those people around the internet, I guess. They're fucking weird, but anyway, let's get into my thoughts on the Switch. I took down notes because I can almost guarantee that I'm gonna be forgetting a lot of things. And after making this list, I can still guarantee I'm gonna be forgetting some things. So let's first talk about the price and the release date. Like, my prediction was a March 17th and 250 bucks. That, like, that, I was like telling my viewers on live stream, quote me on that, I think that's when it's gonna come out. So when they first unveiled the release date, for March 3rd. I'm like, holy hell, that is quicker than I thought. But then I also saw the price at $300. I'm like, oh God, I don't like that. Here's the thing. I saved up $300 in case. Like I got a nice uh, paycheck from the winery and I just took all that and just kept it in my savings. So I didn't touch it, dedicated to the switch. So I had $300. I'm like, all right, this sounds like, this feels like it's going to be just about enough. And this is like back in like December when this happened. So I ended up using all that and I pre-ordered the Switch. I paid it off fully, so I'm excited. But I'm still not happy with the price. Like, I know a lot of the money is honestly just going into the Joy-Cons themselves because of the HD rumble and the motion tracking and other stuff like that. And of course, the touchscreen is a passive touchscreen, which is very nice, by the way. I'm happy they're finally doing that. However, I still don't like the price. But there's nothing I can do about it. Like, like that's what Nintendo wants, so fine. However, if you go on Amazon right now and you look up a PS4 or an Xbox One, you see bundles that come with games for cheaper than $300. So the fact that they're rushing out with a $300 price tag where you can get those other options for even cheaper, that's not too appetizing. But then again, how many people go on Amazon to buy a gaming system? Like, I only know one person personally who bought a game console on Amazon and that was the guy that I work with. Yeah, well, all that said, I ended up pre-ordering the system, like, I paid it off, and, uh, now I'm just gonna wait. I'm, like, I'm super excited, and I see so many things on YouTube about people talking about the Nintendo Switch, and I was watching all their videos, and, I'm uh, no, no lie, I did take down some notes, because they brought up some very good points. I think my favorite video so far about the Nintendo hype is from Arlo. Arlo, I love that guy's channel so much. It's seriously just a Muppet talking about Nintendo stuff, and I freaking love it. But the presentation as a whole, like, I'm kind of hit and miss about, honestly. Like, like it was decent. There were plenty of cringe moments, like, when he was doing the 2 for the Splatoon 2 and it looked like a dab. Like, no lie, I cringed throughout that whole time he was talking about the Splatoon. Because he was like, oh, I came from the lab and yada, yada, yada. But I honestly think that the presentation should have been uh, Nintendo Direct. I know they've been doing that all the time. But the way that the whole presentation as a whole, like, the whole live thing it shows a different turn for nintendo everything that that presentation did was completely different compared to how nintendo normally does it like normally they do just a nintendo direct and it'd be all scripted and be ready to go most of the time like everything just goes according to plan so it's all great and they always have familiar faces and stuff like that but this time it was completely different they did a live presentation thing they had a dj up there which man his music was meh the fact he did it live was cool but the reason why i like those live presentations is mainly like during e3 when people go nuts when you hear them screaming oh my god zelda yes but it didn't happen during this presentation for me it defeats the purpose of it doing live and then we see a bunch of unfamiliar faces up there like we don't see Miyamoto, we don't see Reggie, we only see them at a scripted video part right at the end. They weren't there for that live presentation. And no lie, it's a breath of fresh air. Like we had no idea who any of those people were up there except for the new president, that's it. I feel like there was like an era for Nintendo 
where it was Iwata and people loved him and then we had Reggie and Miyamoto and other stuff like that but now with Iwata gone and the fact that the Wii U is dying and they're revealing a new console it feels like it's a whole new page for Nintendo this time they're getting more serious they're making their console developer friendly and it's it's really awesome like there was one guy that was like oh I am uh, the lead director of all the software for the switch and it was a guy that we didn't know it gives me a good feeling that Nintendo really learned from their mistakes and they want to change that but this is just the beginning the thing isn't even out yet we just gotta see how it goes in the future I honestly don't really see it being too successful especially like the PS4 and Xbox one there's no way it's gonna match PS4 if it beats the Xbox one that'd be incredible but let's be real it's not gonna happen but anyway, I'm looking forward to it. Like I, the presentation was okay. There was one translator that looked like he was just struggling and having a terrible time, and he just wanted to not be there. But again, when it comes to those kind of things, it should have been a direct. But like the way they showed everything was different. Like there's like a, a whole new page. Like I'm happy that they did it live because it, it just, like, that's what it rep that's how I feel that it represents the controllers. Like. Eh. The Joy-Cons do look kind of small, but I do have small hands, so it'll be fine for me. But I'm not looking forward to doing the two-player stuff, but I am going to take it to work at the winery, and I guess my other job too, so we can play it, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm going to take it down to the winery just so me and Ryan can play Mario Kart. Speaking of, let's talk about the games. So there was a bunch of games shown off, like ones that really caught my eye, at least that were in the presentation, where of course there was Zelda, Zelda we're all looking forward to. I'm not really much of a Zelda guy, but I'm picking this one up. I need something to play on day one, right? And Mario Odyssey, oh my god, Mario Odyssey. Oh god, that looks orgasmic. And what I find funny about Mario Odyssey, you don't see any reference to Miyamoto at all. In fact, if Miyamoto has nothing to do with this, it's gonna be weird because it's Mario. It sh Miyamoto should have a part of it. But again, I'm seeing this as a new era, a, like a new thing for Nintendo. And if Miyamoto has nothing to do with it and the game ends up being successful, that really shows how much they don't really need him, I should say. Like, he can finally retire, do his own thing, be done. I remember I saw one video and there was some guy complaining about how Miyamoto is like not doing good for Nintendo and other stuff like that. I can't remember what the video exactly said. But you can tell for the past few Mario games, they've been playing the nostalgia card the whole time. And it got annoying eventually. So the fact that this new Mario game is something completely new, and the fact that it's open sandbox like Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine, it's just finally. That's the Mario game I wanted on my Wii U. I do like 3D World, don't get me wrong, but that wasn't the 3D Mario game that I've waited for. And I already talked about Splatoon. Uh, I played the first one, it was alright, but I didn't get sucked onto it. So, with that being said, I'm not going to be picking up Splatoon 2, but I'm happy that they are making another one and they're adding so many new features. So, like, I'm excited for the general consumer, but for me, I'm going to pass on it. Then we got a few games like 1, 2, Switch, and ARMS, which, after watching the presentation, like, I am not excited for them at all. But, from what I hear, after playing those, like... It, it's really fun like these games you gotta play like one two switch like when they were demoing it off there was like three different games that you could play and there was two of them one of them like, you're like pretending to milk a cow which sounds really freaking awkward and one where you're like moving a joy con and like trying to guess how many marbles like feel inside it and it really shows off the HD rumble very well so I feel like that's a game that I do want to at least try out I'm not gonna pick it up day one because I don't want to pay freaking sixty dollars for that but I would love to see how the HD Rumble like takes advantage of itself. If there's a demo, I might try it out. But if it's, I'm not gonna pay sixty dollars to play one two switch. And besides, nobody's gonna wanna play with me. No, fuck that. And of course, we got Mario Kart coming out, which I'm kind of iffy about it. I was hoping they would add more tracks to it, but apparently they're not. They're just gonna stick with 48 tracks, which don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a fuck ton. But if you're gonna pay sixty dollars again, I want to have more than just new characters and finally battle mode. I want more tracks, like, please. And of course I'm picking it up, because it's fucking Mario Kart. I want to play with more characters, I want to take it on the go and play at the winery with it, but we'll see. But one game announcement that literally pissed me off was FIFA. The guy who was representing EA was up there, like, he was looking at like, everybody in the press conference like, yeah, I am here, yes it is me, none of you know me, but I am a very important person. And you should be honored that I will be putting a game on the Switch. Like, no, like, I really wanted to punch the guy. Because, like, he just, 
gave off a bad vibe. Then you have Bill Trinan in his shadow. And like That's like the only familiar face throughout that whole conversation. And all he was was just a translator. And of course, you got other games coming like Skyrim and stuff like that. And a bunch of ports. Which, by the way, the fact that there's so many ports coming out irritates the hell out of me because it's just this generation as a whole this generation has so many ports and it's fucking annoying i'm sick of it i want original content like we're getting the new mario that has me thrilled and i saw gameplay i see rayman i'm like oh, finally a new rayman no it's just rayman legends ported i'm like fuck i'm not playing that but since we're getting mario kart 8 ported where whoa excuse me where are mario maker and smash i assume we're going to be getting a direct with them saying hey you're gonna get the switch version of smash coming out in like august or something and then we're gonna have you be able to use your gamecube adapter just plug into the side of the dock and you'll be fine and also here are the rest of the amiibos that you guys have been waiting fucking two years for yeah the fact that smash didn't get announced or anything that kind of irritates me and mario maker i was hoping there would be a mario maker port because mario maker is an amazing game it's phenomenal but the fact that it's gonna be so far only on the wii u and 3ds kind of disappoints me because they're gonna shut down the wii u servers probably within like two years because nintendo's like that and they fucking suck like they shut down the mario kart wii like uh, well the nintendo wi-fi connection as a whole they shut that down a month or two before mario kart 8 came out which is terrible timing because let people play mario kart for a while and then have mario kart 8 come out and then have them enjoy that but no, you just cut it off before then, so I guess was, I guess they're trying to force people to upgrade to Mario Kart 8. I don't know. So I hope Smash does come to the Switch, and if it does, we want more characters like the Ice Climbers. But also, importantly, we gotta use our GameCube controllers, because if we can't use our GameCube controllers, then there's not gonna be a lot of people playing it, because that's their preferred way of playing the game. But enough of the games, let's keep moving on. The fact that it's gonna be paid online, at, like, at least later, for like the first, I don't know, for six months, not even, like when it hits fall, that's when it's gonna be paid online. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit salty about that, because I already pay 50, now $60 a year for PlayStation Plus. And honestly, I freaking hate it. The only reason why I keep renewing it is because I have so many games on my PS3 that are from PlayStation Plus that I still play, that I have to keep renewing it to play those. If there was no DRM, I wouldn't pay for PlayStation Plus anymore. I'm sick of it. Like, I don't play online, and the PS4 games that they give you for free, I bear I don't even download those. They're a bunch of games of shit. The only game I downloaded that I was really enjoying was Super Meat Boy. And the way they're going to be handling it this time for the Switch, you're going to be getting like a, like a retro game, like an NES or a Super Nintendo game, and you only get to play it for that month? Like, why? Why can't you just keep it? Fine. Fine. And the online chat is not going to be in the system itself. You got to like have it on your phone or some other smart device. You got to have an app dedicated to it, which I can technically understand why, because the system itself is all the way on your, it's like it's toward the TV and you don't want to have a giant cord, which technically that's what the PS4 and Xbox One go, no, the PS3 and 360 went through. No, no, just the PS3. Fuck. It's kind of unnecessary, but fine, fine. Let's do it. I mean, I'm going to still support the Switch as much as I can anyway. What sucks is I don't have a lot of room on my phone. I only have a 16 gig phone and the thing fills up so freaking fast. So I'm barely going to have room for these new Nintendo apps. I forgot to mention the battery life of this thing. Uh, three to six hours. Wow. Now a lot of people are going to be bitching. Oh, it's such a terrible battery. Well, they wanted to be a home console first and then a handheld second. This, I honestly think they should have marketed as a handheld that you can plug into the TV. Like do it vice versa. Because... When it comes to handhelds, that's Nintendo's bread and butter. Like, that is what they sell the most. Home consoles, not too great lately. With that being said, they want the Switch and the new 3DS, or 3DS as a whole, to coexist. 3DS is becoming outdated hardware. You sacrifice a lot of power to do 3D as the gimmick. And now, they're barely even using it. And if hell, freaking the new Pokemon games don't even allow you to use 3D in the game. That shows something. So I think if they would have marketed the Switch as a handheld first and then as a console second, then I think it would be a little bit better because, again, that's their bread and butter. But a lot of people are going to be bitching about how the battery life is going to be very terrible. But if you see the way that you charge it, it's USB Type-C. It is a cord that you can pick up anywhere. Like It's not as convenient as micro or mini USB or whatever. Actually, I think micro is like taken over. Mini USB barely exists anymore. Anyway... It's going to be USB Type-C. You can pick up a cord, and I'm hoping, I, don't quote me on this, but I'm hoping that you can just get a portable charger like my Pokeball right here, and just plug it into that through USB, and just keep charging it through that. 
If not, you can always bring a charger with you, like whether it be a car charger or a regular power cord that you can just plug in on a train or a, I can't say a bus, a train or a plane. But what sucks is if you want to play it, like, you know, have it like all docked up and looking nice, you won't be able to charge it and have it like being on stand at the same time. There's some other third party company that's going to be making a special stand just dedicated to that, I guess. That's what it looks like, which is kind of ridiculous that you have to carry that around too. But whatever. And since we're going to be talking about negative stuff about the Switch a while, because I'm trying to get my positive and negatives, uh, the Pro Controller. $70 for a controller. Jesus. Like, a brand new controller is, what, $60? $65? Whatever. Fine. I get it. The HD Rumble does cost money. But, God, $70. Oh, my God. I do not look forward to paying for that. I'm going to buy it. Because it's Nintendo. The Nintendo, I can't say Nintendo always gets my money because I don't, I haven't bought a 3DS game since Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. And I haven't bought a Wii U game since, what was the newest game that I got? I think Yoshi's Woolly World? I don't know. But still, I'm getting the Pro Controller because that looks freaking comfortable. And I remember I saw some live presentation, I think it was from Nintendo, I don't know. And they were saying how it's like, it's their favorite new controller. But then again, it's pretty much being biased. Remember he was saying, oh, my favorite used to be like the game controller, but after failing this, now nah, this one's my new favorite. With that being said, I'm not going to be using that as my controller for Smash Brothers. I still want to use my GameCube controller. I don't know how well the battery's going to last on the Pro Controller, but I know on the Joy-Cons they said like, what, 20 hours? That's crazy. That's actually really good. Oh my god, I just thought of something. I love how people are complaining about the Switch's battery. Look at a PS4 controller. That thing does not last at all. It'll last like three hours, maybe four if you're lucky. And that thing is dead. That's bad. But the fact, like, I was taking a few more notes, and like the last few things I'm talking about is new people, future Nintendo, and the fact that they're not killing off the 3DS. We had kind of already touched up on. But yeah, like, I think right now they're still supporting the 3DS because that is their most successful thing. But as of now, it's not selling very well because everyone has one now. I think as of now, they're going to be supporting it. Like the new Fire Emblem, oh, uh, not Awakening, the new Fire Emblem Warriors. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait. But the fact that they're releasing it on both new 3DS, not the original, only new 3DS and the Switch, eh, I don't know. Like, I'm going to be picking up the Switch version. I'm not going to be picking up the 3DS version. But the fact that they're doing that kind of irritates me. But I'm thinking that hopefully they might do that Pokemon Stars and might make it for the Switch and make that as a key, like a, like a key step to getting into only the Switch being their main console and handheld, I should say. But anyway, I think they're still supporting the 3DS because it's their main thing that's selling well. And it's just, I don't know, their backbone, I guess. But as the Switch sells, and hopefully it does sell plenty of units, but with that price tag, I don't see that happening. Maybe after an eventual price drop, like when it drops down to 250 eventually, then it'll become more appetizing as a handheld. But then again, the 3DS is that expensive, and uh, not a lot of people bought it until it dropped down to like, one, what, 170 Anyway, back to my point, the fact that, like, after it does sell well, hopefully, uh, hopefully more people will have it and make that as their ha main handheld system, because even though it's a handheld, it's a console. This is something that Sony has been trying for, what, the past decade with the PSP and the PS Vita? They want you to be able to take console quality gaming on the go, which, don't get me wrong, they do have great handhelds. Unfortunately, they didn't sell too well. At least the PS Vita didn't sell too well. It sold more than the Wii U, and PSP was pretty popular for a while. But unfortunately, when it comes to the handheld market, it's Nintendo's bread and butter. They can put out less powerful hardware, but yet be more successful. But now Nintendo is, it's Nintendo's turn to hop onto that. The fact that they can take console quality on the go, which is really awesome. But unfortunately, like I don't see that being their main thing. Like They're not going to try to market this as a handheld, which I, I still think they should. But with that battery life, it's not going to last long at all. But I'm pretty confident if you like tweak with the settings, like make it a little bit darker and other stuff like that, then it should last about maybe four hours if you're playing Zelda, if you're lucky. But I'm really hoping that the Switch is a good first step or first paragraph, I should say, to their new chapter of Nintendo. As I said earlier, that whole presentation just shows that is a new Nintendo and I'm hoping that they do really successful. And we see a bunch of games that are coming to it. Like we got Sonic Mania and Sonic Project 2017 coming out to it. But since I have PS4 and I'm going to have the Switch, I'm going to be picking up the games on my PS4, unfortunately. 
only because of the fact that it's more powerful hardware and it's going to look a bit better. Like, don't get me wrong, I want to support my Switch as much as I can, but if, let's suppose I have all three systems and I have a choice, why would you go on the least powerful hardware? I mean, don't get me wrong, I do love me some Nintendo, but I paid a lot of money for all these systems, I might as well pay for the best experience as well. Kind of wish I picked up a PS4 Pro, but if I'm going to be spending $400, $400 I'd rather buy the Nintendo Switch because it's a whole new system, while the PS4 Pro is just an upgrade. Which, by the way, I feel like the Switch, like everyone feels this way actually, the Switch is just a better version of the Wii U. The Switch is what the Wii U should have been from the get-go. But unfortunately, that technology wasn't there, and when it was there, it was way too expensive, They so they couldn't do it. Hell, they didn't even fully utilize the Wii U, honestly. Like, there's a port on the bottom of the gamepad, right next to the gold plates, where the gold plates charge the system, at least through the dock. That little thing in between them, they never used. Give it a few years, I think Nintendo will finally unveil what it was actually supposed to be used for, and you're gonna figure that out through Digino Gaming. I'm just hoping that the Switch does well. Uh, it might, I don't know. With the hype that's behind it, with the fact that it's trending on a bunch of things like Facebook and Twitter, and you got other people, like other outlets, talking about the switch a lot like you know when you see those things on facebook where it's i forget what, who makes these videos but they like they advertise a bunch of stuff like oh look at this thing and then it shows like text and like little blocks or whatever like i forget how to describe these videos but they talk about like weird and cool technology they've done a video like that for the switch and i've seen that on facebook so the fact that it's getting known like people know what the switch is that has me excited and when i went to pre-order the system uh, here I saw one of my old buddies from high school, and here he said that he's not a Nintendo guy, but he's sold on the Switch. That's a good sign. But I think I should finally stop talking about the Switch. Like, you all know how I'm feeling now. Like, I'm excited, I'm picking it up, I'll do an unboxing, and whenever Zelda comes out, and, and, and I said whenever Zelda comes out, it's coming out day one. What I mean by that is here I'm going for the midnight release for the Switch, but I'm waiting for my copy of Zelda to come through Amazon because I can get it. 20% off. So when my copy of Zelda comes, which is going to be later in the day, I'm going to be streaming that. And I'll be doing an unboxing of the Switch, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm super duper excited. Then again, I was super duper excited for the Wii U as well, and look how well that went. With all that said, let me know in the comments, what are you looking forward to in the Switch? Is there any games that you wish that would, they would have been announced? Like, I was hoping they'd talk about something about Smash or Mario Maker, but the fact that those aren't coming yet kind of upsets me. But this year, when it comes to their release window, they're showing off a bunch of games that looks like it's gonna make us survive for this year for now. But next year, they better reveal some really cool stuff. Like, unfortunately, we're probably gonna get a couple more ports, but still, I think even though there's not too many games coming out this year, the games that we are getting that are coming from Nintendo, at least, they're quality games, and they're all coming out this year. Because we use pacing when it comes to when it comes to games wasn't that phenomenal. But this year as a whole, we already like we've got Mario Kart, we got Splatoon, and we got a new 3D Mario, and we got Zelda. We're all getting that in one year. While with the Wii U, it took almost its whole lifespan to get that kind of stuff. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the Switch in the comments, and I'll be reading all of them, by the way. And that's going to be it for this video, so if you're new and you like what you saw, you know what to do. In the description, there's my social medias and stuff, and my P.O. box. The Switch has some hit and miss things, but I'm still super duper excited for it. And let's hope we don't regret buying this thing. Apparently, they're shipping out 2 million units, day one, and every single one of them is already sold out. At least, with GameStop, every Switch they're getting is only for pre-ordered systems. Like, it's only, like they're not going to have any spares. Anyway, I'm happy. Like, I'm... I'm super stoked. I've been talking to this girl and like ever since the Switch announcement, that's like all I'm talking about with her and she finds it hilarious. And she's excited for me, like that, that's awesome. I'm excited. I'm super duper excited. I already found a spot on where I'm going to put it and I'm super 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 duper stoked. Like, oh god, I cannot wait for this thing to come out. And I'm rambling. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do that a lot. I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching this video. And again, let me know what you think and I'll see y'all in the next one.